Uh, Jake Blunt's here. Uh, and by the way, we're live on our, our Facebook page. You can catch the video uh, to see his nice instruments. He's put down his banjo now, and he's picked up what looks like maybe, what is that, an old fiddle? No, it's a very new fiddle, new actually. New one, okay. Yeah. Can't it's, tell from here. Yeah, it's 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 unique. Okay. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about it. Uh, a guy named Nathaniel Rowan built it for me. He lives up in Putney, Vermont, and he's made some, some real good violins in his day. Daryl Anger plays one of his, oh, yeah. and... Uh, a few friends of mine as well so they get around but yeah they're they're quite visually distinctive nice all <laughs> right and uh what are you gonna play for us i was actually gonna play you old timey gray eagle um uh-huh. so i right. i think i'm gonna stick to the plan because it's always different hearing it live and done by me than it is to hear it recorded and done by tatiana hargraves <laughs> i'm not sure that this is better but it'll be exciting <laughs> So like you were saying, this is a, a tune from Manco Sneed, uh, who is a Cherokee musician from Cherokee, North Carolina. Timey Gray Eagle, a tune from far western North Carolina around Cherokee from Manco Sneed, who yes. uh, I, th- I think uh, he was of the Eastern Band of Cherokees, and I think most of the recordings uh, you wrote are, are from much later in life. Yes. But maybe that one was featured some of his family members, too. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, This is one of those stories that you were talking about of, of digging up a, a, a history that maybe we didn't know about before, where um, my... Duo partner Tatiana Hargraves and I wound up going to play a show at the Museum of the Cherokee Indian out there, um, and they wanted a set of Manco's music, which is quite an ambitious task for musicians. Right, his tunes are uniformly really weird uh-huh. uh, and very difficult to play, 
But we got there and learned a lot about Manco that we didn't know before, whereas earlier scholars and folklorists had kind of painted him as this reclusive hermit fiddler. We found out that, in fact, his whole family played. He had a lot of people that he played with. There were a lot of banjo, fiddle, string band musicians in in the Cherokee community at that time. And we talked to elders who remembered dancing to his music uh, out on the fairground and in the barber shop and on the street corner that he was all over. And... All the brothers played, Manco, Osco, Pico, and Campbell. Uh, <laughs> and we've had the good fortune of getting to know the Sneed family um, and perform his music at their family reunion. Uh, and in particular, Sarah Sneed has been super generous in, in sharing you know, time and information and all of that with us. And one of the things that they shared with us was this CD that they have of recordings that were made uh, earlier in life with Manco playing fiddle and his daughter and son-in-law accompanying him. Mary Sneed, his daughter, was a really, really good guitar player, and, like played at the Grand Ole Opry and had her own little career. And we found out that this tune, which comes across as like this C major, super dorky tune on the solo fiddle recording is just like an A minor rager the entire time <laughs> and redid it for Spider Tales in, in the way that we learned it on those recordings. And I think the Field Recorders Collective is working with the Sneed family on getting those out there. Okay, good, yeah. good. I was at that wonderful Cherokee Museum about uh, oh. a year and a year and a half ago, um, and yeah, it's, it's one of those places you do the museum, and you walk outside, and oh well, that's where the gift shop is, of course. And yep. uh, and uh, but I enjoyed uh, checking out the you know, the music section there. I don't remember finding any Manco Sneed work there. I, I feel like I would have been drawn to that. I'm not sure if he's in the permanent exhibit, but I know that they've done a fair bit of programming around his stuff okay. and that they're working with the jam program uh, in town to kind of bring that musical tradition back because it unfortunately died with Manco. Yeah. Um, so there are folks out there teaching the kids in that community to, to play and hopefully they'll, they'll be a bit of a revival of this music. Yeah. Well, I think you've got a couple of Manco Sneed tunes on this uh, Spider Tales collection here. Love the liner notes where you give, uh, you know, not just the, the, the keys and such, but uh, a little bit of the history and where you get it from. It's always a great tradition in, in traditional music. Um, mostly of African American origin, but you got Judy Hyman of the, uh, the Horse Flies. Who yes. You've been a, a student of, I guess, over the years. And Indeed. she's got one that ties in uh, the, the tragic history of the Holocaust uh, and, um, and then a few of these from Manco. How do you most mostly get some of this history is it generally through talking with musicians is it um is there any component of like oh there's actually a lot of written knowledge that's just been lost or is it really just oral history it's a good mix so okay. there are things like the manco sneed story where there is a fair bit of literature out there people did write articles and then we showed up in the community and found out that everyone in the community thinks the articles are a joke uh -huh. um and wound up learning a whole different history that is not written anywhere. Um, that's one extreme example. Uh, on the other hand, there are tunes like We're Gonna Hunt the Buffalo, which I often play. That's off my first EP, Reparations, where it came to, to me from a white fiddler named Jimmy Driftwood. But on that recording, he talks about learning it from what he calls two Indian boys on a reservation he grew up in western Arkansas, so he was right on the border with what during his childhood was Indian territory. Uh, Oklahoma was not yet a state. And I wound up having to, like, dig through old maps and, like, cross-reference, like, who was living next to him during that time in his life and who would he have met and found out that he mentioned that these musicians were part of something called the Green Corn Dance, which is associated with Southeastern tribes, and that he lived next to the Cherokee section of Indian Territory for most of his childhood. And clues like that give us a pretty good indication. Probably he learned this tune from some Cherokee musicians out west. Um, so periodically it's a mix of the oral history and the written record. Uh, sometimes it's a situation where the oral history and the written record, rec written record contradict one another. Right. Uh, and sometimes, you know, in the case of Judy's tune, um, I know her really well. And the relevance that that had to the project was from an event that I was part of, right? Uh, there was a, a point at which this tune entered the black string band tradition and I was there. So I'd, I'm able to say with some certainty this is what the tune is about, this is where it came from, and this is how 
it entered the tradition. Yeah. It's yeah. the nice thing about those new pieces. Indeed, indeed. Um, and uh, so these tunes are uh, on uh, this wonderful collection, Spider Tales. Congratulations on all the accolades you've gotten. I mean, Thank my you. goodness, uh, NPR Music, uh, the, what are the Guardian, uh, the, the, they call it the Folk Album of the Month, five stars there, uh, one of the best of the year, Bandcamp, The New Yorker. Did you expect this kind of success? Or when no. you, I mean, that's a weird <laughs> question, but when you were making it, though, were you like, you know what, this is really going to be groundbreaking? I mean, I knew it was something that hadn't been done and yeah. I knew that it was good. And like, you know, the crew that I hired to make that album with me, it could not be good. Like it, I knew it was going to be good, but there are a lot of really good old time albums and albums in general that come out and don't make it outside of our circles. Um, it's really easy as an old time musician to put out your stuff and have it reach the same like 3000 people nationwide and have it stop there or maybe go a little bit farther um i never expected that level of press for this um and i never expected it to reach as far as it has and i definitely wouldn't expect for like the country music scene <laughs> to have embraced me in the way that it has or you know it's it it's been shocking yeah well we're glad to see it and hear it 